Hey everyone, this is Matthew, aka Sentient Number 6, and in this video I'm going to be talking about two of my favorite techniques to use when writing percussion parts, and those are polymeter and polyrhythm. Um, so I'm using this sequence here. This is the same one that I was working with in the last video about hi-hat sequencing and drum racks. So if you haven't watched that video yet, um, go watch that one first so that you know how we made this sequence to begin with, and then uh, come back to this one. Uh, so here's the pattern. Cool. So um, typically when I think that I want to start um, doing something with polymeter in a track, um, I'm thinking that I want to expand upon a sequence that I've already made, like this one. And while still retaining the same kind of character of that sequence, I want to build the energy in the track. Um, so uh, a polymeter is defined as basically two or more time signatures happening at the same time. So in Psytrance, we're basically always using 4-4 four, four time, meaning that we have, you know, we have four kick drums per measure, right? Each kick drum is one quarter note, and so we have four quarter notes uh, per measure. Um, which we then arrange into like four measure phrases or eight measure phrases or 16 measure phrases or 32, right? We, we're always using um, multiples of four. And so a way to create really interesting grooves is to kind of break up that sort of predictable um, divisible by four repetition um, by using something that is not in four, four time. And so uh, the way that I like to do that is by using clip loops. And so this button that I'm clicking on and off over here um, allows me to drag the end of my clip longer, and you see those dotted lines appear every four measures, uh, indicating that the loop is now repeating here. Um, and so this is super handy, right? If you have like a simple hi-hat sequence, like just a straight 16th note with like an open hi-hat or something, right? It's nice to just drag that out to the end of your phrase. Um, but we can adjust the length of that loop um, using this um, bracket within the clip. So make sure that this loop uh, button is on, and then what you can do is grab the end of this bracket and uh, select the length of your clip loop. And you can see as I do this, right, the, the clip is, is changing, you know, the, um, the loop back point is essentially uh, moving as I move this bracket. And so, um, the way that this becomes polymetric is when you are no longer doing something that's um, readily divisible by four, right? So instead of doing a four bar loop or a two bar loop or a one bar loop, you do something different um, than that. So um, I like to keep it kind of within one or two bars, um, but something like this, right? If I bring this to like the first 16th note in the fourth measure, that gives me a phrase that is 13 16th notes long, so a 13 16 time. And you can see now, if I zoom in, right, these little dotted lines aren't really appearing um, on this um, quarter note grid that I've got going on. Or I guess this is an eighth note grid, whatever. Um, but you can see, right, like the, the loop is starting over in a different place every single time. Right, and if I were to drag this all the way out to the end, right, it would be a long, long time before this actually loops back on the first beat of another 16-bar phrase. And so this creates a lot of really fun and interesting rhythmic variation. Uh, and I'll just play that for you really quick. So you can see, right, um, the loop is repeating every 13 16th notes while we still have that 4-4 um, four, four kick and bass pulsing underneath it all. Um, so I love this. This creates like a really hypnotic groove. Uh, you also hear this in techno a lot of the time. Um, and so yeah, like this is a really awesome way to uh, reuse a sequence that you've already written um, and create new loops out of it. And so, you know, I wouldn't just drag this like all the way to the end, like just straight, you know, 16 bars of this sort of non-linear non -linear, uh, polymeter, you know, I would probably stop it like after eight bars and then duplicate that whole clip so that I have kind of like this start over point um, just to like give the listener the sense that like, okay, there is still like some, some order underneath this like seemingly non-linear, non-repeating pattern. And so, you know, a way that I might 
um, kind of signify that to a listener is like, you know, a little double tap on the kick, take out those last two bass notes, and then maybe take out these, um, this beat of hi-hats, just to kind of give a sense of like, okay, we're starting over. Right, and so that, that definitely gives a sense of like, okay, like a new phrase has just begun. Now, uh, you could continue to make variations on this super easily, right? Like, let's say um, I'll, I'll take this selection right here, and I'm going to press Control-E, uh, should be Command-E if you're on a Mac, and that will split uh, the clip into two um, based on my selection. And so now I can zoom back out, and I can just take this 13-16 loop and um, maybe just drag it over a beat, and now I have an entirely new 13-16 um, polymeter. And then I'll do the same for this one. Uh, I'll drag this to, let's go to beat three. And so now like I have um, multiple patterns very quickly um, from that one original sequence. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I love that technique. Um, I get a lot of mileage out of that uh, in my tracks. And, um, yeah, I hope that was um, easy enough to follow. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or want any clarification. Um, definitely go experiment and have fun with with polymeters. Uh, this, is, this is super, super good stuff right here. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about in this video is polyrhythm. So... Um, these are definitely two different things, um, whereas uh, a polymeter, right, the one that we just worked with, still has that common denominator, right, like the 16th notes in this sequence are still the same 16th notes that are in my kick and bass, um, and they, they kind of lock in together. And so a polyrhythm um, is two or more rhythms being played on top of each other that seemingly do not relate to one another. And so... Uh, Another way to explain it would be, um, let's say I'm, I have a 5 over 4 polyrhythm. So basically that says that in the same length of time that I have 4 evenly spaced notes, I also have 5 evenly spaced notes occurring in the same amount of time. So um, the way that we can do this in Ableton is, is super, super easy. Um, so first I guess I'll play these clips that I have here for you. Yeah, so uh, again, it's it's this very uh, hypnotic effect. Um, it almost seems like it's it's something that's just completely out of time, um, and I'm using this um, this quarter note delay, or sorry, this whole note delay, um, to also kind of accentuate the pattern. So I'll take all the plugins off for now. I'm using this um, Maracas drum rack here, and I'll just start over from scratch here. So um, I'll start with a um, just like a one or yeah one bar clip so this is four beats um, so if I wanted to do something that was say five over four um, the way to do that in Ableton is to start with five notes of the same length and they can be any any length at this point um, so these are all like squeezed right next to each other but what you do now is you can highlight these these five notes and then if you press the enter key, you get this highlight and you have this bracket tab now. And so if you click and drag that to the end of the bar, it stretches those five notes um, to be, you know, it keeps them to be all equal length. And so now essentially we have five equal length notes occurring in the same space that we have four equal length notes from the kick drum. So let's repeat that a few times just to get the sense. Right, so that is a, a polyrhythm. And so uh, by itself, right, this sounds kind of maybe not as useful, 
um, maybe move some notes around, and uh, maybe remove a few of them as well. So let's du duplicate that. And now this is something that's a bit more groovy, right? Like the, the percussion is a bit more displaced, um, but it has this sort of um, hypnotic quality to it um, that I really like to cultivate in my tracks. And so especially when you throw like the reverb and the auto pan and the delay back on, you get something that's, that's super cool. Yeah. So let's do another one just for demonstration's sake. So this one here, I think this was 11 over 16. So I have um, a four bar phrase right here. Um, and so each of those four bars has four kick drums. So therefore I have uh, 16 kick drums occurring in this clip. And let's do that same uh, polyrhythm thing again. So uh, I'll make 11 notes. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, um, 11. Move these to like different hits. And then what I'll do is I'll drag select, oops, drag select all the notes, press the enter key to give me this highlight in the bracket, and then drag it all the way to the end of the clip. So yeah, this is really cool because if you if you look at the notes, right, you can see that they're not really affixed to the grid at any point. Everything is like either slightly offset or, you know, you have to zoom in really, really far to see where it's actually landing on the grid. Um, and these sort of um, polyrhythmic percussions, I really like for like foresty tracks or like the, those deep, uh, gloomy forest stuff. Um, yeah, like you can pretty easily hear how this is applicable in that kind of music. And especially um, if you add in the delay afterwards, because you have something that is not really related to like the tempo of your project, right? Like those 11 notes are not really derived from any kind of quarter note, eighth note, 16th note, 32nd note spacings. Um, and so when you add a synced uh, delay on top of that, you you get some some really interesting some yeah really interesting patterns that occur um, using the delay. And so um, again, like when I would do something like this in a track, I probably wouldn't let it um, ride out, you know, all 11 notes. I would probably go through and take a few of these out, um, you know, based on what other instruments are playing in the track. Yeah, this is a uh, five over eight. Um, So yeah, um, I guess that about does it. As far as like the processing I'm doing on this, I've got some auto panning. Um, here's that delay. And this is a, a plate reverb chain that I'm using. Um, so I've basically got like um, the dry signal chain and then the wet signal chain. So I've got the uh, plate reverb on fully wet. And the reason I do this is so that I can EQ the reverb tail by itself. Um, so it's kind of like a little bonus trick, I guess, for this video. Um, Oops. Uh, so yeah, then after that, it's just some, some EQ. Uh, and this is like a tape machine emulator just to make it sound dusty and old. And yeah, I'll, I'll go into more detail about uh, processing and these kind of spacey forest percussions in the next video. Uh, so yeah, that does it for polymeter and polyrhythm. Uh, hope, hope you all found that helpful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions about anything and also let me know if you if you have any like requests for future videos on topics that you'd like me to cover i'm all ears uh, i definitely want to keep these going so yeah thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time